hear me. Is that you, Amy Askin? No, nope, that's Nancy Askin. Oh, I can hear you, yes. Okay, great. Well, as people are coming on, um, I'm glad you can still hear me. Luckily, we're not recording. <laughs> so, welcome everyone. I know you're all getting situated. Oh, maybe we are recording. Oh dear, <laughs> I will have to edit that. <laughs> Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining us this afternoon. We will begin in about one minute, making sure we get everybody uh, on our uh, on the webinar. Hopefully, you can still hear me. Great. Um, hi. On behalf of RCL Benziger, we'd like to welcome you to this afternoon's feature webinar, Teaching Religion Online, Sharing the Gospel While Sharing Your Screen. Hi, I'm Nancy Bird, and I'm Director of Training and Development at RCL Benziger, and I would just like to have a few housekeeping tips uh, while you're all getting situated. Uh, we will be recording this session and uh, you will receive a link to it about 24 to 48 hours after the conclusion of our time together. Along with the webinar, you will receive a PDF of Amy's PowerPoint. So this will allow you to sit back, uh, relax, absorb all the information, and then the PDF will be, help you to uh, recall the great information. Our schedule today is Amy will present for about 30 to 35 minutes. Uh, there will be a very short word from your sponsor. And then Amy's going to stick around for a few minutes to address any questions that you might have. So check out the chat feature or the Q&A feature that's on your Zoom toolbar, which is located usually at the bottom of your screen. Uh, just move your cursor over it and you'll see um, a chat box box or and or a Q&A. So that will be the way to uh, um, address it or ask any questions of Amy. So now I just want to introduce Amy. Uh, she's earned her MA at the theolog uh, in Theological Studies at the University of Dayton and has ministry experience in the areas of faith formation for children, youth, and adults. And Amy has presented locally and nationally, just came back from a world tour of Los Angeles in the C3 conference yesterday. And uh, But her expertise is particularly in catechist formation, a young adult ministry, and technology in ministry. Currently, we are blessed to have her at RCL Benziger as a project manager. She uh, lives in Dayton, Ohio with her husband, Patrick, is a reluctant runner and an avid <laughs> reader. So Amy, thank you so much for uh, sharing your wisdom with us today. Thanks, Nancy. So let's just go ahead and jump right in. I have a couple of um, kind of philosophical things that I want to uh, talk about. What is the difference between teaching religion online? And then we'll jump into some really practical um, how our resources work in an online setting. And so uh, just kind of starting off, uh, the other day I was in a group and uh, someone asked the question, what's the difference between remote learning virtual learning and online learning. And I kind of laughed, but it's actually a really interesting question. And so it's important when we talk about teaching religion online, well, what do we mean by online? And I want to encourage you to think of online not as a tool, but as an environment, as a space, as um, a place where people gather. And actually, in more, some of the more recent documents, our church supports this idea of digital being an environment and not a tool. And so in Christus Vivit, uh, you know, the, the church says the digital environment is characteristic of the contemporary world. It is no longer merely a question of using instruments.
elements of communication, but of living in a highly digitized culture that has profound impact on our ideas of time and space, on our own self-understanding, on our understanding of others and the world, and our ability to communicate, to learn, to be informed, and to enter into relationship with others. And so when we prepare our classrooms, when you prepare your physical classrooms, you consider all of those little details of welcoming, of appearance, of access. And when you're thinking about your digital environment, that digital learning environment that you're welcoming your students to, we need to think about these same kind of ideas. And so our online presence is then an extension of our in-person presence. And for those of you who are preparing for hybrid learning, this really is your literal reality that you will have some of those students um, who are joining you through uh, online tools and digital tools and those who are physically in your classroom. And so I want you to think about when we consider how do we teach religion online, what are those things when you put them into your physical classroom signal that this is a Catholic space? And so maybe you have an image of Mary that you use in your prayer space. And if you were teaching completely online, maybe you can keep that in your uh, video conferencing area so that that makes an appearance every once in a while. Or if you have a Bible or a Bible storybook that is well used, make sure that your students see you using it. So right here in my workspace, I have this little icon of Saint Saint Drogo. Saint Drogo is the patron saint of coffee. Uh, and so that is part of how I kind of bring this digital environment to remind me that this is a Catholic space. So continuing, the new directory for catechesis. So you may be familiar with the general directory for catechesis. It's actually quoted in our uh, teacher's editions. Um, and this new directory that just came out in English at the end of last month is uh, kind of the updated version of that. So it's our roadmap for how we put together catechesis. And so it reiterates this point about digital spaces, particularly in the section on catechesis in the digital culture. And so it says, catechesis cannot be carried out solely by using digital tools, but by offering spaces for experiences of faith. So just as you are planning for your students to have experiences of learning, even if they're in this online environment, we also need to think about how are we planning for experiences of faith? And the document, um, actually in a previous section, talks about that these experiences of faith are integral to catechesis. And so catechesis that sets up an opposition between content, so your religion curriculum, and the experience of faith would show itself as worthless. And so this is kind of the distinction between just teaching religion. You have to teach the content of the faith. Um, you know, in a Catholic school, we have to give that a grade, which is sometimes contrary to, you know, living a life of faith. Uh, but it's this, that distinction there between just teaching religion and also providing a catechetical experience. And so in Catholic schools, we do both. We provide content and knowledge of faith, but we also want to have those spaces, those opportunities, and those experiences where your students can both have experiences of faith, but also process their experiences of faith. And so um, the new directory talks about that the, the point of catechesis is that we take our lived experience and we look at it through a lens of faith. And that's how we are led to that transformative relationship with Jesus. <clears throat> Excuse me. So when we are teaching religion online, we need to think about how are we offering those opportunities for experiences of faith. Because if you teach your students everything they need to know from their entire religion curriculum, the whole catechism, but it has no joy, if it exhibits no mercy, if it's just miserable, if it doesn't connect to their lived experience, we risk that they fail to encounter the love and mercy of God. And so we need to think about as we're planning, how can we provide them with both the knowledge and also the experience? <coughs> Excuse me. So here's a couple of suggestions.
All right. So first of all, you need to establish relationships with your students and you all are planning this already. So you're thinking about your icebreakers um, and how will you get to know them. And so what I would encourage you to do is include some faith questions into your icebreakers. So you might have a board like this that is set up like a Jeopardy board and you could have them, you know, randomly pick a number and then they're going to pick it. And then this has a question that pops up. And so what is your favorite way to pray? And um, you know, that's a, a great question that you can ask um, children or older children, or you know, they don't all have to be super explicitly faith-based like that. Like this option says, what's the funniest thing that God created? And so it's only intended to really develop that, um, that culture where talking about faith and God is inherent to who you are as a learning community. And so I didn't link all of these numbers. I have a whole deck of these. They started as sticks in a jar um, and I just kind of loaded them into this format. Um, but they, they give that opportunity again to say, um, that we talk about faith, that we get to know faith as part of our dimension as who we are, and that we establish that routine, that we will talk about God in prayer and faith, and what's that like for us. Uh, so these questions in this format, you could use uh, throughout your curriculum, actually. So when I use this, I have different sets of questions for different parts of lessons. Um, so they, they can be used at various times throughout uh, your curriculum year. So then moving beyond that, our welcoming lessons in our textbooks uh, always have suggestions for additional activities. And so you might take the time in these first couple of weeks of school where you're establishing those relationships, really working on digital literacy, promoting, you know, that they know how to access their lessons, that they know how to submit them. You might use some of these additional activities to help establish that relationship and again, instill that habit of talking about faith. So this one is actually from the seventh grades, or it's commonly seventh grade, the story of Jesus Junior High, Blessed Are We Faith in Action. Um, and it talks about making a personal timeline and including in that timeline when they received sacraments. Um, so you could do a personal timeline. You know, there's a lot of those all about me pages. Um, I know they're very popular. My, when I was a DRE, my office was in the primary wing of the school. And so the kindergartners would color those all about me pages. Um, you can do that using like a Google slide where they, they fill in the boxes on their slide and include some of those faith questions. You might include, if you're using some of the, uh, the the apps like Padlet or Flipgrid, you could post questions and then invite for them to, to respond to your questions. If you're gonna do that, particularly with uh, older kids, I would set a minimum. So maybe you have five faith questions and I would say to them, you need to answer at least two or three of these faith questions, um, but it has that opportunity for them to go in on their own time. Again, just building in that faith component of, of how we are um, a community of faith, even as we're a community of learners. All right, so I went into the Bitmoji craze. And so this is about creating that environment. And so if you're using the Bitmoji classroom as part of your, um, your online learning experience, create an environment that also gives them experiences to, to have opportunities and space for prayer, for faith sharing and faith exploration. Um, so I did this as the Bitmoji environment. You might just want to have you know, a section of your class website or that, that maybe it's just links and that's totally okay if you're not into into the Bitmoji environment. So you can see here, I have I have linked items here. So, so this rosary over here links to the prayers of the rosary. Um, the Bible that is open links to the USCCB website. I'm gonna show you this one. So my candle back here, let me see if it pulls up there. This links again to Padlet. Um, so Padlet is like an online bulletin board. And so the question that I asked them is, where did you experience God's presence this week? And one of the things that I love about Padlet is that they can upload their responses in words and drawings and pictures and voice recordings and video. So it's multidimensional. It's great for lots of different ages. And so that's just one way that you could just say at some point during the week, I want you to go online and to explore um, the, the prayer room or the prayer space that's there. 
And so that's, again, just creating that space and that environment to, to help them. So you could use this with Catholic prayers and practices or, you know, take some time to introduce some new prayer styles. Uh, so it could link to an art as prayer website. So Praying in Color is a, a particular author who wrote a whole book about it, but she has um, some dynamics on her website where you can do that. So even if you're using a regular Bitmoji classroom, and I bet there's gonna be questions about this later, you can just put that crucifix in there. So your classroom, if it has a cross on the wall, put it in your online environment. So again, just giving them space that says, this is a holy space and this is where we talk about faith. The other thing I want to encourage you to do is to get comfortable praying online. So even if you are a person who is very comfortable praying in front of people, it can be awkward to pray on video. And so I encourage you to practice. Um, you might wanna try doing Lexio Divina. So having some opportunities where you use an audio recording of scripture, you can have students listen to it together and then they can talk about what stood out to them. Um, I'll show you another way to use Lexio Divina with older kids uh, a little bit further into the presentation. Uh, you might use the examine. There's some great audio recordings that are kind of guided meditations of the examine that are available online. Um, I used a modified examine with ninth graders when I was uh, the catechist for ninth grade religious ed last year, and I asked them the same four questions every time. The first question was, where did you recognize God's presence this week? And if they had a hard time answering, I would say, where did you feel joy? Where did you feel peace? Where did you feel love? Because those were the fruits of the spirit. The second question was, for whom or for what are you grateful this week? The third question was, who or what needs our prayers? And then the fourth question was, talk with God about what God wants you to do this week. So that really ties into um, that faith choice at the end of the chapter for Be My Disciples or that faith in action that is part of the faith in action series. But I just use those same four questions and I we just scrolled through them every time. Um, they loved it because they knew the questions were coming. All right, we're gonna keep scrolling on. This one is gonna seem silly to some of you, but another way when you're teaching religion online is to go ahead and do that weekly or daily check-in. You can pick kind of how frequently, frequently you wanna do this. I did this with ninth graders as well, and you might think that this seems really babyish, but they actually liked it. So I asked them, what's your relationship with God like right now? But I asked them to tell me in a weather language. And so if they said their relationship with God was sunny, it means that it's happy. I'm excited. We're good. Um, they might say stormy, which means they're angry or they're frustrated. Um, I don't have it up here, but we also used foggy, which was confused. I don't really know where I am with God right now. And so this did a couple of things. The first thing it did is it made them actually think about their relationship with God. And, uh, some of these kids didn't do that very often. And so it brought that mindfulness to the front of mind. The second thing it did is it gave them some language to talk about that relationship. It gave them the ability um, to, to kind of say, well, it's sort of like this. And if we think about scripture, Jesus did that all the time. He said, the kingdom of God, it's kind of like this. Um, and so it just gives us that opportunity to help kids find a handle to talk about faith. And then the third thing it did is it gave me um, sort of a, a, a status quo, you know, a balance, a, a baseline to work off of. So we had one kid that was consistently sunny, 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 sunny. And then one day he came in and he clicked stormy. And I say click because we did this using Google Forms. Even when we were meeting in person, we used Google Forms for this. Um, and so he clicked stormy. And that said to me, whoa, I need to check in here. I need to see what else is going on. And so we learned through having that conversation and checking in with him um, that he was really angry because there were things that were happening in his family and he felt like God wasn't doing anything about it. So having this kind of handle into that gave us an opportunity as, as a group to talk about lament as a prayer form, you know, that we're allowed to tell God that we're angry with God. And it also let us talk about, well, how do we keep connected to God when bad stuff happens? So it seems silly, but again, just checking in with them is a really useful tool when you're teaching religion online. And you don't get to see necessarily what, what's happening with them, how are things connecting um, in their faith experiences on a day-to-day -day basis. 
All right, so we're gonna jump into some details about actual teaching your content. I know this is what you're here for. So the first thing that I want to let you know is that in many ways, teaching religion from a content standpoint is very similar to teaching any other subject online. And so you have some decisions to make. Are you going to do synchronous or asynchronous? And if you're not familiar with that language, synchronous is all of us together online at one time, so in real time. And asynchronous is when we provide opportunities for um, our students to go learn independently. Uh, and I would just say, when you're talking about faith, when you're doing your religion lessons, I would save at least some of your synchronous time to be faith-based. Um, so to, to have that opportunity to talk about the topic, to talk about what their experiences of it, how does it relate to their life? And so the reason for this is there's actually um, some of the best practice research in online learning says that when students are able to talk about their process, so even in math where you know, they show their work, when they talk about that, they get deeper competency in the topic and it gets better integrated into their learning and so we should be saving some of our synchronous time to be having those faith conversations there are other things that you know maybe you're fine to do asynchronously they don't have to all be together but i i would just encourage you to make sure that you're thinking about that and that could be really simple so if you have little guys and you're doing a morning meeting um, you know, that where you say good morning, um, you, might, you might encourage them to say that what they're going to do is today I will pray for. So if I'm having a morning meeting, I might say good morning, today I will pray for Nancy. And then Nancy would join in and say good morning, today I will pray for Jeff or Ann or, you know, someone else who's next. So it's just using some of that time um, to, again, connect with your community. Um, so again, just some of those things that you need to think through and we have content that can be adapted or used or assigned for all of these things that you're trying to sort out. So one of the things to think about, and I'm sure you're doing this already, is what is your digital equivalency? And so, you know, when you're looking at your teacher's edition um, and it says to you to have, have kids work in pairs and discuss or to be in a small group, what does that look like online? So you might use a breakout room or a discussion group. Um, if you tell them to turn and talk in their classroom, you might use your chat feature, uh, depending on how your chat settings are, depending on your learning management system. Um, for polling, you can use just the polling that is part of, if you're using Zoom, it has polling, um, but you could also use some of the other apps. So there's Mentimeter and there's uh, Poll Ev or Poll Everywhere, which also gives these polling options. Um, if you would do four corners, so I, I know this mostly as a youth ministry game, but I have used it in a classroom, or forced decisions. I used forced decisions a lot when I was teaching about literature when I was a high school English teacher. Um, you could either have them where they, they vote by holding up, you know, a piece of paper uh, is, that's different colors or that you could use the poll. So start thinking through when I see this in my textbook, I'm going to know that I do this online. Um, you will see when you get these slides, there is a link. Um, uh, LSU actually put together a great open source document that really gives how do you do those active learning practices in an online capacity. So let's jump into some more examples. You might want to convert what you would do in a print environment into a digital environment. So if you are using an ebook or a printed book, you're not necessarily going to get that immediate feedback that you would get. This is an introductory little quiz kind of part. It's part of the um, opening chapter for uh, the story of Jesus. And so maybe you would use Kahoot or I love Kahoot, so I'm partial to that. But you could use some of the other kind of trivia or quiz programs and just take those questions and drop them into um, Kahoot. I will tell you again, my ninth graders, they love Kahoot kahoot their whole body language change when they hear the lobby music and if you've used kahoot you know exactly what i mean by lobby music um, it is simple enough that you could use it with little kids because where i have words as the options you can put images there so that they're picking based on the image 
If you haven't already, please check out Flourish. Flourish is our online platform. Um, I just did a screenshot here instead of linking it to it because I work in product development. My screen looks very different than yours. <laughs> um, so Flourish gives you content that if you're a teacher or a student, um, they can log in. You can integrate some of this content into your learning management system. So if you're using Google Classroom or Class Dojo or Seesaw or any of those, and I'm going to show you some of the ways to pull that in, but you can use this to pull, pull into your system. So the option that I'm looking at here on the screen, you see I circled Saint Profiles. Um, and if you are familiar with Lester We Faith in Action, you know that we use these saints. Um, they're, they're people of faith and be my disciples. So this could actually go for either of the series. And so when you're thinking about how to use your online time, you know online should be shorter and thus should focus on the more essential information. So you might think to yourself, you know what, I don't have time to put this saint story exactly into our digital time together. And so then you might consider, instead of putting it straight into your lesson, to create a hall of saints. So you can make this as a separate website um, that connects the image with the chapter. This actually right here clicks on, so the link that I have here goes straight to um, our saints resource page and Flourish actually also links to our saints resource page. And so you can just connect them to this more information of the saints and then allow them to go spend time um, in your hall of saints, either asynchronously or assign it as part of, of the lesson. You might do this as a whole unit. Um, you could do the wax museum. So maybe they're reenacting certain saints and each student in your class is assigned a saint and they could post it on Flipgrid. If you're using that, they could use a video where they talk as if they are the saint. Um, you know, one of the things I was thinking about, and I Googled, this doesn't exist. What if we created bitmojis of saints? Could be super, super fun. Um, so one of the things I do want to point out is that if you are using our e-assessments, there are sometimes questions about the saints that are included. And so you'll want to make sure that you go into that question set in the, the e-assessments and take out that question um, on our saints. But again, lots of ways to use these that they don't have to be fully integrated into your lesson but that they're still available for kids to explore and learn about these amazing people of faith. One of the things that I think is a great resource for teaching online is using the additional activities and our cross-curricular uh, connections that are included in our teacher's edition. So both of these examples are from Bluster We Faith in Action, um, but we have the same features in Be My Disciples, uh, they're named slightly differently. So this additional activity again is part of the first chapter for um, the story of Jesus and it asks you to divide students into two groups and one group is going to identify the human characteristics of Jesus and the other one is going to identify the divine characteristics of Jesus. So if you're using Zoom or some of the other kind of video conferencing platforms, you could actually do this in real time using the whiteboard feature. So you could either draw a Venn diagram on there or you could do two columns and just assign different kids, you know, to, to each group so that they know what side they're working on and they can actually in real time at the same time be adding things to that whiteboard feature. So it's a great way that you could talk about that Jesus is fully human and fully divine in real time, giving them an activity to do. The other thing to think about, so these cross-curricular um, connections. So the curriculum connection in this chapter of Bluster We Faith in Action has to do with music. Um, and the music program for Bluster We Faith in Action is actually on Flourish. Um, so you could play it through, through your system so that they can hear it. You can connect them to it so that they can hear it. Um, but again, just using that curriculum connection so that you can connect them to it. Um, I love asking kids that love music to make a play list that is based on a theme and then explain why they chose those choices. Um, I remember when I when I was student teaching my my cooperating teacher used to ask us to do this and she would always say to kids um, the way she would say it is no ladies no drinking no drugs and no swears like those were the rules you can't have those songs but anything else you can put on there. Um, I think we'd have a lot of Taylor Swift and folklore but that might just be my generation. 
So choice boards. Um, one of the things that I love about choice boards is that we are giving students opportunities for self-guided learning and the online environment is really rich for giving these opportunities. So it's the hybrid environment. So you could take the different sections of hear and believe and respond from bless our we faith in action um, and give them four options or more however you wanna work it, um, to say, explore this topic. So you'll see here, I gave it my chapter. They're supposed to complete one option using chapter one as their guide, so they know where to go get more information. Um, and then they have different choices here. So on option one, share a photo of your family's nativity set, I have that linked to Padlet. So that's where they would upload to share that picture. Reading option two over here. This is actually straight from activities and projects. That's one of our ancillaries for the story of Jesus. So the links here are to Luke and Matthew, which go to the USCCB Bible site. They send a word that stands out to you. So the way that this one works is that I use Mentimeter. Um, see if it pops up here. So you see a Mentimeter says, what words stand out to you? And they enter these three words. And if you put words in here, the result is a word cloud. And so you could share what words stood out to them. Maybe they do this asynchronously. So they're doing this in their own time. And then when you have them all joined together, you would share their word cloud. Um, and then compare and contrast, I do want you to see this. So I grabbed this right out of activities and projects on Flourish, and I uploaded it as an assignment in my Google Classroom. So this is where they can see that it is a PDF um, and they can respond to these questions using the format in Google Classroom to, to compare the infancy narrative from Luke and the infancy narrative from Matthew. Um, again, it's an activity that's already planned. You just need to pull it over into your content management system. Option three, ask them to take a virtual tour. That one I had to go find, but we do have virtual tours of many locations included on Flourish for both Blessed Are We and Be My Disciples um, that allows them to travel the world without leaving uh, their, their home. And then this free choice option is actually an additional activity, again, that was in chapter one that says, uh, share how it makes you feel to know that Jesus is both fully human and fully divine. Um, this one is connected to music as well. And so I gave them choices and you'll see three of the four, again, I had to find that one, but there are virtual tours available. Three of the four are actually activities that are named either in Flourish with the additional activities or directly in my teacher's edition. Um, so I'm not having to make this all up, just having to format it a little bit differently. So let's look for littler kids. If you have the tinies, um, first of all, I have a ton of respect for you because I, I like little kids. I didn't like the ratio of them being a whole lot more than there was of me. So Be My Disciples, I switched curriculum series here on you, lesson two. I went through the teacher planning page, you know, that lesson planning page that's at the beginning of each chapter, and I moved through the components of uh, how we discover, we explore, and then we respond. That's part of the Be My Disciples uh, curriculum. And I found an online option that goes with each of these pieces. So you should open with prayer. You could do the prayer process as part of your shared prayer time, or you could invite them to spend time in a prayer space where they would explore that prayer option. These three pieces are part of the, the two days of here, it's not here and believe, sorry, it's explore, wrong series. Um, and so it's about the Bible in the first chapter. So they could do show and tell with Bibles or Bible storybooks. I went online and looked, my public library has a ton of eBooks of Bible stories. So you could connect them to lots of Bible stories. Um, this eBook of a Bible story is to a video of the parable of the sower. Um, I know some of you are, your schools are concerned about YouTube. So some of you are using Edpuzzle. So Edpuzzle is an app that allows you to um, use a YouTube video and then you can enter comprehension questions periodically throughout it. Or I used Safe YouTube, which um, doesn't allow them to connect to all sorts of crazy stuff on YouTube. 
Um, this re video read aloud, this book is actually the literature connection um, for this chapter, which is called The Listening Walk. And so again, using those additional activities, I went and found the video of The Listening Walk. It could be read to them and then they could do a listening walk, which is what the activity is included there. Um, so St. Jerome is the saint for this chapter. Uh, you know, our, our saint's resource is not the most tiny kid friendly, it's great but you know, not always a great reading level for little kids. And so this is connecting to Kittle, which is an online encyclopedia for children. It's based off of Wikipedia. Um, you could do the faith vocabulary if you're using Flippity or Quizlet or other ways of creating flashcards and then songs in the Bible. I'm gonna show you this activity in just a minute. So again, just going through and saying, what would I do with this? Following exactly the lesson planner and then picking and choosing what's the most essential information of each of those. And again, we have these resources that are already part of our teacher's edition or they're part of Flourish and you just need to pull them over um, to work for you. So again, going back to that chapter activity, which was about the Psalms. So I started at Flourish and I went to chapter activities and I grabbed the PDF that is connected to it and I pulled it over into Seesaw. So Seesaw is a, a content management system that's better for little kids. There's lots of options out there. But by pulling this PDF over, I set it as a template. And so they can use this template to, they can use the pencil to write their answers in. And then I ask them to use the microphone to record them reading the entire prayer. So it's very cross-curricular. They're doing their religion. They're also doing some writing and they're doing some reading all in this one lesson. And then they can submit that to their classwork. So again, I just took that this is exactly when you click on chapter activities and you go to chapter one, the, the PDF that comes up looks just like this. And all I had to do was pull it over into Seesaw um, so that they could see it. So I just went through a whole lot of information. I hope I gave you a ton of ideas. Um, and I just have some final thoughts. So we, before I hand it back to Nancy, the first thing is, please remember you are beloved by God. God loves you so much and is with you in this entire process. And your students are beloved by God. And I hope that that is the big message, that when we create this environment, that everything you do in your online learning environment reminds them that they are loved. The second thing is, it is okay and it's even good to start simple. Um, this is a stressful situation and the possibilities can be overwhelmed. My husband was laughing at me because I was just putting together this workshop for, for you all. And I was like, well, I could do this and I could do this and I could do this. And he was like, take a breath, woman. Um, so take a deep breath. Pick what is essential. What do you need to get your classes started? And then maybe pick maybe just that one thing that makes you happy. Um, for me, it's the Bitmoji classroom. It's a completely unnecessary but super fun way. And I just, it makes me happy. And then the other thing is remember to pray and know that I'm praying for you and that I'm cheering for you. And I hope we get to see some of the amazing things that you will do with your students this year. All right, Nancy, I have talked enough. <laughs> Well, we are grateful for your wisdom. And so I'm quickly going to uh, go through a very, very simple uh, uh, word from your sponsor. And then we'll turn it over to Ann Battis, who will just give us a little closing reflection. And then we'll get to all of your great questions that you have uh, on the chat in the Q&A. And we will get to those. I just wanted to remind you that at our scale you have a print and digital options. And he mentioned many times about Flourish, and yes, that is our digital platform where we have plus we my disciples of family life. So uh, just know that we're providing you all kinds of options that will help you determine what's going on in your classrooms or in your schools this year. And um, just know that at the conclusion, I do have a slide for um, where you can reach out for free samples, or if you're, if you're still evaluating religion textbooks, you can reach out. I wanted to remind you that if you're an early childhood educator, you get free, um, and it's not for you, so you can access it wherever you would like, but this study tip, and it is a uh, close to 30 little videos that do go along with our free software and stories that have some but it also can be very insightful for any early childhood educator as well as parents of those little ones. Next, Ms. Amy. Uh, what about you? Uh, Ms. Amy 
he said he more loved it than God. And so what are you going to do to nurture yourself? So we have a brand new little uh, site on our website called Faith Fuel Blog. Check it out. There's prayers and reflections and ways in which you can continue to nurture yourself as a child of God. Next. Nancy, we are, yes? having, we are having a little difficulty hearing with the sound quality. Okay. Uh, so just to let you know. Thank well, then you. I will just um, turn it over to, can you hear me now? Why don't you just say our Very little clear. closing prayer? Pardon? Very clear. I didn't know if we wanted to answer some of the questions that were posed for Amy. Yeah, I just want to get to the last slide. And gonna, then... Sorry. I'm going to jump in here really quickly before we move to the last slide because my most favorite product is on this slide. And so um, one of the things that I love is the popular devotions. So our family devotions are the two, it's the blue and the green and blue and the purple book that are in the bottom on the middle. These are 39 popular devotions from around the world. And so part of what I love about them is that they are they have beautiful art. They explore culture and geography, and they are all expressions of faith. And each one of them has a simple process um, that families could do at home or that you could have kids do at home or you could do them as a class. So I'm, it's, it's a shameless plug right there, but it is absolutely my most favorite product. And it has some really great applications, both in an online environment and at home. And now I will go to the last slide. <laughs> Nancy or Ann, do you want to explain this one? There you go. Can you hear me? I'll stop talking and we'll let Ann answer questions. Always something with technology, isn't it fun? Um, just know that if you're interested in any free samples or uh, information about our many digital and print options and to contact your local sales representative, our great uh, vice president and general manager has provided his email address there for you. And so please feel free to uh, reach out to him if you would like additional information and also information on some special offers that we're offering this fall. Now I'm going to stop and turn it over to you, Miss Ann. <laughs> All right. Uh, some of the questions, Amy, that we've been receiving really want to know a little bit more about the Bitmoji classroom and how you set that up. And also the calendar template that you had at the beginning for an mm -hmm. icebreaker, what was used to create that? Okay, so Bitmoji classrooms um, are actually built in either PowerPoint or in Google Slides. Um, and so when I put mine together, I went to Google and I searched for images that were free for reuse and that will also had a transparent background. And so you literally just tr look for what do you want to put in your classroom. So I looked for um, brown wood floor and table and Bible um, and put those in. And then you use the Bitmoji app to create your own representation. So I will tell you that there are um, video tutorials that are available. So if you just did an internet search for Bitmoji Classroom, you would find a tutorial on how to put yours together. Um, the individual items in there then can be hyperlinked. And so the same way that you would put a link into a document or into a slide, you would do it that way. There is also, um, it, if you are a Facebook user, there is a Facebook group called Bitmoji Craze for Educators. And the only reason I mention that and give them that plug is that a lot of those teachers are sharing their templates. So some teachers are using them. Um, some of them I think are a little too busy in my personal opinion. They just have a lot going on. Um, but they're using them where they put their chalkboard on. And so they'll put, this is the lesson of the day. And so that, that, that kids know where to click uh, to go for their lesson of that day. So so, so it's again called the Bitmoji Classroom. Um, they can be very overwhelming. They can get sucked in or they can be really fun. I'm actually creating a couple for my parish to use for RCIA. So I'm excited about that. The template with the grid um, that kind of looks like a calendar. So you would use again in just a slide or you, you could put it in a Word document. It's easier to build it either in PowerPoint or Google Slides or whatever kind of slide. You could do it in Keynote as well. Um, so what you do is you use a table and you set your table. That one I, I believe is set as a five by five. And then you put numbers in the middle 
and you hyperlink the number. So in that case, I highlighted the number and I clicked the hyperlink in PowerPoint and I said link to a slide in this presentation and then it will give you the menu and you can click to it. When you build those, a great tip is the, the slides that are, on your, are your questions, you can do two things with them. Number one, hide them. They don't need to be visible in your presentation. And number two, if you put a link at the bottom that says back, it will automatically take you back to that, that grid. So you can use this as a calendar to link to daily assignments. You can use it as an icebreaker like I just used it. Um, you can use it as a Jeopardy game. And it's really just playing with the hyperlinks um, to link to something further into your, um, into your document. And you can find this, uh, there's probably a tutorial for that online as well, which would be something along the lines of using PowerPoint for Jeopardy probably would be the keywords that I would search for. Um, again, just looking for the tutorial on there, but it's, it's, it's really just a matter of playing with the hyperlinks and linking back and forth within your same document. Thanks, Amy. One of the questions that have come up from several different people is that we have teachers who have never taught online before, mm -hmm. as well as experienced teachers who are very digital savvy. Mm -hmm. If you were just starting out, and this is your first year to teach online, especially with religion, where would you start? So where would I start? Um, there's, there's, there's kind of two pieces, there's two parts to this. The, the first thing is learning your, what is your learning management system? And so fortunately, many of our schools have already decided that for you. Um, and if you are not comfortable, uh, if they haven't decided that for you, finding one that you believe is comfortable and easy for you. So, um, you know, for some people that might be, uh, I use Google Classroom, quite frankly, because I can get it for free without being an actual teacher tied to a school. So I, I will own that bias is why I have used that one. But get familiar with that system and, and look for tutorials. Um, so there is a, a professional development community that's called Simple K-12 that is doing lots of tutorials right now on how to use these different tools in the classroom. So just start basic and get those basic, how are you going to get information to your students? students and how are you going to communicate with parents. So from the technology end, that's the really basic part. From the beginning teaching with religion, it's really about establishing those relationships. So those, for me, the first two weeks of school at least should be about developing relationships and getting everyone comfortable with the technology. That's how I would really spend my time, um, is walking students through how to use the technology, that they know how to turn things in, but that they also have opportunities um, to share with you who they are, and for you to share who you are in obviously appropriate ways, and that they have opportunities to talk with one another. So putting them in different groups to do different activities, um, that might include that welcome lesson from religion, but really building that community of faith, taking that time to do some shared prayer together. And it might be as simple as, what would you like for us to pray for today? Um, it doesn't have to be super high tech or complicated, but taking that opportunity to build that faith community within that learning community. And don't forget that kids don't live in a vacuum, they come from families. And so helping families to understand what is their role both in your classroom and also within your community of learners and of believers. Um, one of the things that I like to remind people is that when we go online, we're taking learning literally into the home, which has a million advantages, but we're also inviting ourselves into people's homes. And so we have to do, you know, if you think about the first time you ever visit a new friend at their house and how you know you, you do that little dance of relationship of, of what how are we going to, to, to interact with one another just remember that you're establishing that great trust and compassion and hopefully joy um, at learning and that you are going to be a smart, supportive community together one of the, the questions Amy that we received is um, how do you teach students who don't believe in God? 
Um, students who don't believe in God, I'm going to say that this depends on how old they are <laughs> because we teach them differently depending on how old they are. Uh, going back to our uh, the directory on catechesis, um, it talks about that catechesis, that faith formation, um, is again a dialogue that it's a dialogue, that it's offering different lenses. And so there's one part where you just say religion, this is what it is and I have to give you a grade, you know, so, so that's part of it. But then the second part of it is that you're offering them lenses by which to look at their own experience of life and to say, do you think maybe that's God? And then letting them direct that conversation from there. Um, and, and so again, it depends on how old they are. To, to know exactly how to, to negotiate that conversation. Um, but again, you are offering them, I think of it like being at the eye doctor. So is it three or is it four? Is it four or is it two? You know, that you're giving them um, a lens of faith to say, have you thought of it this way? Um, you know, when, if you like to go walk in the woods because it gives you a sense of peace, have you ever considered that that might be God? And so it's a lot of questioning and in, it, leaving the dialogue open um, is the best way to do that. Again, with that caveat that to, there, there comes a point where it's like, this is, a, this is a Catholic school. This is a class you have to take and you have to do this work. Um, so, so there's that part of it too. But, but in terms of just continuing to keep that conversation open, to allow it to continue to be a dialogue, to leave that space for the Holy Spirit to come in and just fill um, that particular student, knowing that your job is just to keep asking those questions. Um, and again, just pray for them and pray for yourself. And I'm going to offer two other resources. Oftentimes children who are asking or young adults are asking about uh, their belief in God. Sometimes that faith experience is very important. That relationship with mm -hmm. you is critical. Sometimes shorter pieces of information mm -hmm. also is helpful, like a document for high school students is Faith Alive. Um, and it is a very short magazine type style that might help answer some of those questions. For the younger grades, elementary level, and for their families, um, our Catholic heritage is also really a wonderful document with good resources for people to refer to. Mm -hmm. um, and there are so many other good questions, Amy, but I'm afraid uh, time is difficult. But here's what we can do, two things. One, we will save the chat and we can go through and send you the responses to your questions and make sure that they get uh, received that the time that you have put in in terms of coming and being with us today. So we will be sure to do that mm -hmm. and send you those responses. Uh, the other uh, request was, um, can you tell us more about your favorite resource? One person missed what was your favorite resource and why? And as Amy is talking about that, there was so much in this presentation. Maybe you could use the chat room because as I said, we saved this in chat. Would you write, what would be a great follow-up webinar that would support you in your ministry, uh, especially helping young people learn and live our Catholic faith? So if you wouldn't mind adding those topics in chat, Amy, tell us about. So this okay. is, um, I'm going to move it here. So it's our family devotions. And part of how you know it is my favorite is I have it right here at the handy. Um, so our family devotions is a collection of 39 popular devotions from around the world. Uh, there are actually something like nine different images of Mary in there. So, so for example, it talks about how do people in Africa relate to Mary? And it has um, Our Lady of um, Our Lady of Kenya in there, and it has Our Lady of Levang, but it also has images of Jesus and saints, ways that people pray, that they celebrate faith traditions. Um, it's a really beautiful book um, that we have put together. It has really gorgeous artwork in it, but it also has uh, curricular con contents because it talks about cultures, it talks about geography, uh, it talks about expressions of faith, uh, and a little bit about how they traveled even. It's, that's not, that's not a huge part of it, but there are some pieces that talk about, well, it started here and it moved here. Um, and I really just love this, this particular 
devotion. One of the other things that I like about it is when we put together this particular product, we wrote it to have a very simple process for exploring each one of those devotions. So it provides a description of the devotion and then it has a process for exploring what is the aspect of faith that these people are celebrating so that this particular culture is celebrating because we are a universal and diverse church. Um, and so it leads through each one of those has, uh, you, sometimes it has background information or additional prayers that are related to it. It goes through a simple activity and discussion guide and then has a closing prayer that is part of every session. Um, I will tell you, I'm a very tactile person. When we were working on this book, I literally brought in kinetic sand and bubbles and blocks. Um, and as a staff, we kind of played with things to say, what do families, what do classrooms have um, that could be ways to connect um, little kids and big kids with with some of these ideas in tactile ways in musical ways in um, So all of those modalities of learning So I love the diversity of expression of faith that we have these beautiful faith traditions that come from all around the world uh, And I also love that it connects to learners um, In many many different ways so that hopefully one of those um, Will connect with them and that they will have just an amazing experience of faith and of God's love for them and I'm totally biased because it's also <laughs> available in English bilingual Spanish. That's another important detail, but I'm, it is absolutely my favorite. <laughs> Thank you, Amy. Hopefully that gives you a good background. And not only that, Amy's own love and the work that she poured into that resource for you and to use with young people and with families. As publisher of RCL Benziger, we are most grateful for you and uh, the ministry that you serve. Having served in Catholic schools myself for almost 30 years, I'm very grateful for all the work that you do and continue to do, especially in a time that really offers many opportunities. And that's really through God's blessings and graces that we're able to move forward. With that, we would like to send you off in prayer but know that you will receive the PowerPoint, the recording, as well as some of the templates and the answer to your questions. And Nancy will follow up through that. And thank you, Nancy, for leading us through the webinar. So if I may, please let us place ourselves in God's holy presence. As part of this prayer, I'm going to reference the new directory for catechesis and expand on what Amy began with. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. From the directory, in the process of proclaiming the gospel, the real question is not how to use the new technologies to evangelize, but how to become an evangelizing presence on the digital continent. Catechesis, which cannot simply become digitalized, certainly needs to be understood the power of this medium and to use all of its potentialities and positive aspects while still realizing that catechesis cannot be carried out solely by using digital tools, but offering spaces for experience, experiences of faith. So we ask God to bless us, to bless our students, to bless our families, and one another as we move yet into another year, a year of faith, a year of growth. And we ask God to keep us healthy and safe as we go forward to proclaim the gospel message. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Thank you, everybody. God bless. Have a great day. Bye-bye. Thank you.